Although initially overlooked as a draft prospect, Eddie Betts has gone on to become one of the Blues' crucial links. Today on Inside Carlton, we catch up with the club's leading goal scorer to see how eight years as an elite footballer have helped him develop on and off the field. Eddie, Carlton picked you up in the 2005 pre-season draft when you were initially overlooked in the national draft. Did you think your AFL career might have been over before it had even begun? Uh, yeah, I was, I was back in Western Australia at the time. Um, you know, my manager rang me up and said, oh, you didn't get, you didn't get picked up. So. I was, I was a bit devastated, uh, but I, I knew at that time, you know, I was overweight and I was carrying injuries and, and clubs wouldn't, uh, wouldn't look at you. Um, so yeah, I was really, really devastated. What was your first impression when you got picked up by Carlton when you came out here? Well, they gave me a phone call when I was in Western Australia and said, listen, we're going to give you a chance, come and, come and train with Carlton. And my 18th birthday was, was that week and all my family came across from South Australia and Western Australia. and. I said, listen, could I have my 18th birthday and then come across? And they said, no, come across now if you want a chance of playing footy. So just left, left everything and flew over and they, they celebrated without me. But I came across and trained with Carlton. Um, and they, they said they were going to pick me up on the uh, rookie list. And then I think Trent Noble at the time was training with us. I got picked up for Richmond at number one on the pre-season list. And they were going to pick Trent Noble at number three. And so they had no one else to pick. so they. So they picked me and put me straight on the senior list, so I was pretty happy with that. What was the reaction from your family and friends? They were, they were very excited. It's, uh, it's funny because my mum's two brothers both, both passed on and, and one got buried with his Carlton scarf in, in his grave and the other got played footy all his life and got buried with uh, his number 19 jersey on. And I got picked up for Carlton and got given the number nine, 19 jersey, which was, which was pretty special. What, tell us about your upbringing. You grew up in WA, you were then in Adelaide for a little bit. How did you end up in Melbourne? Well, my mum and dad split up when I was, when I was younger. My mum lives in Western Australia. My dad lives in South Australia and Port Lincoln. Uh, I was travelling back and forth, mum and dad. And then I shifted across to South Australia when I was 14 to live with my dad. And I was doing all, doing all the wrong stuff, the bad stuff there, you know, breaking the law and all that kind of stuff. And, my mum came across and seen that was happening, so she heard about this program in Melbourne. Uh, it was the Indigenous football program run by Phil Cracker, and she said, oh, let's shift across to Melbourne, we'll give you a chance over there. So her and uh, my, my auntie, her and her sister, shifted me across and when I was 15, so been here ever since. So was it daunting to come to Melbourne as a 15 year old? It was. You get homesick a lot, but because my mum and my auntie moved over and a lot of, a lot of family moved over with us, it wasn't, wasn't that homesick until they went home. So they waited till I got drafted and did all the stuff they needed to do over here. Then once I got picked up, they, they went back to Western Australia. So you have a very special relationship with your mum and auntie. How much have they influenced your life? A lot, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't probably be here. I would be in South, I wouldn't know where I'd be. I'd be in South Australia somewhere or Western Australia. I wouldn't be playing football, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, they mean a lot to me. So let's talk a bit more about when you first came to the club. What do you remember in those first couple of years? <laughs> I, was, I was really, really shy. I, I didn't talk. I think there was only Andrew Walker and Corey McGrath as the only two Indigenous guys that were here. So I just really talked to them and that, that was all. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough, I think, because we were right at the bottom at that stage. You know, we won two wooden spoons. Um, and because I just got chucked straight into with all the senior guys, and I was unfit, I was, I was, I had a big gut, I had a big face. Uh, yeah, so they put me straight in with the with the, uh, with the fit guys, and that was really really tough. Aside from your football, you've got a fiance now, a new baby boy. How has uh, having a family impacted your life? <sighs> uh, it's, it's a big change. Um, when when you have a tough day at training, you know you. You are, you're buggered, you're grumpy, you are tired, and you go home and, and you see this little little cute, cute kid sitting in front of you. It just you know brings a light and just it's like just brighten up your day. It, it was like that first with my dogs. I used to go home and uh, get happy with my dog, but now it's my little boy. I, I go home and he just it changes my life when I get home. Best of 
luck with everything.